Oh, door. Hold the door. No, don't hold the door. Fling that door wide open. Turn on your hot light. Let everything in. Let everything out. Open heart door. That's what you want. Heart doors must be open if you want to have any kind of life as a creative person, she said knowingly, as if she knows it all. Which she does not. The door, the heart door, must swing in both directions. With the salt and the swing. Not a euphemism. We'll get to that. The swinging door thing, not the not the euphemism thing. Open heart door, not closed door, not whore door. But what about the white walkers? Won't they get in and f*** everything up? Life is chance. If you change your mind. Take a chance. Also, white walkers are fictional. This is reality. Take a chance. Take a chance on. On reality. Let's keep this brief, she says, already feeling like she's about to go off into a ramble. Which she doesn't need to do because the, the thing she wrote this week was, um, it was ramble enough for all of us. Art Safari 2024! I just got back from Glasgow. That's in Scotland, you know. It is, I looked it up on a map. Famous for the big yin. It may be octopus arsehole soup. And, uh, fluffy, cute cattle. And, uh, you know, a bunch of other random stuff. Literally hundreds of people claim to have seen the elusive inhabitant of the Loch's deep waters. If you read this week's post, The Heart and the Hawk, you will know I went to Glasgow. Again, that's in Scotland. To see live Justin Hawkins rides again for the first time. In person. Oh God, she's banging on about the darkness again. <laughs> But while I was there, I also saw, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before, but one of my favourite people, Tom York. <laughs> Playing with the smile at the SEC armadillo. Oh God, she's banging on about Tom York again. <laughs> that new record is amazing. I planned my whole week around that Justin Hawkins show and uh, it just so happened they were playing the night before. Fate, you be the judge. Anyway, The Heart and the Hawk. Just go read it. It's about the themes we're going to talk about today, but uh, through the lens of the Justin Hawkins experience. One, two, air, one, two, three. It's brilliant. Keep it brief. We're going to talk about three things today. The Heart Door. Hands and instruments. In that order? I don't know. I haven't really worked out how this is going to go, so just bear with me. What? Hands. What? Take a look at this. And this. And this. 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 <gasps> Ooh, look at this one. What did you notice? No two hands, because they were all hands, are painted or interpreted exactly the same. Just like actual hands. Shut up and get to the point! Stay on point. Each artist, and I used the word poet in the post to cover off on anyone who walks around with an open heart door. And I think we could all agree that painters are uh, poets of pigment. Makes you sound super smart. Each artist uses the same instruments, the brush, the paint, their hands, to create a different interpretation or expression of a hand. And yet, in their style. Now those hands I showed you before. Hands the water, water. They were all within paintings in the Kellingrove Art Gallery in Glasgow. I started in the Dutch wing and I moved through the Scottish wing, just looking at hands. Not the whole painting, although I have pictures of the whole painting, but just the different interpretations of those hands. And then I wrote this. Some have aged with the shine of glossy realism and are expressed with such fine delicacy that I lean in closer to check the work. Other hands do not look like hands at all, particularly up close, and seem to be an approximation, an interpretation, the suggestion of a hand as imagined by a poet. Hands. So how do hands relate to anything else that I wrote about in that post? It makes no sense! How does it relate to Justin Hawkins? How does it relate to... Did I mention Tom York yet? How does this relate to heart doors and instruments? Well, I'll tell ye. Pull up a chair. Right there, I talked about the artist using instruments. The expression of yourself through your art, your music, your writing, whatever. And the kind of instruments you use in the pursuit of that expression as a way of interpreting 
what we would call the metaphorical hands, what you create, the artwork, what that hand looks like. All those hands are just interpretations. And you, as an artist, as a writer, as a whatever you are, you are just interpreting things that have come in through your open heart door and pushing them back out into the world. Your interpretation of a hand, with the hand being your art. What does your hand look like? (gasps) Riddler! But I just casually mentioned the heart door there. What is the heart door? I think the heart door is probably the biggest theme in the entirety of the piece. And this is going to be dicey because I'm advocating for having the heart door open. Turn on your heart light. But as you will know, that tends to leave you quite vulnerable if your heart door is open all the time. Which is why I also talk about the concept of bulletproof fragility. You're going to need that if you're going to be walking around with your heart door open all the time. But let's talk about why the door needs to be open. When it's open, it's open to receive. To receive, and through the receivership, to uh, let your poetry back out. Release the poetry into the world to explore and find whatever it's supposed to find. The heart door swings in, the heart door swings out. And if you're lucky, and you're uh, lubricating it well, it swings on, you know, non-creaky hinges because you're getting the balance of the in and out correct. You picking up what I'm putting down? That's smart. How about this? To be a poet, again, I'm using the term poet very loosely to cover anyone who does anything creative. I don't think it's possible to operate with your door closed. That means you're not receiving any inspirations or inputs. Open your door. And you're not sharing anything. No input, no output, as they say. With your heart door open, it's terrifying because having your heart door open leaves you vulnerable but I think it's the vulnerability that lets you create more true art something that means something to you it's not some sort of hollow lifeless soulless thing which you know there's plenty of that shit out there the open door of your heart is what allows you to create that honest work you want to make open-hearted work you work Work that makes you feel, actually just work that makes you feel. I don't feel anything. All the artists I admire seem to have that door open. Like they're just trying to express something in a true way. It's not the subject of what they're doing that is the true thing, it's how they do it. The way that they are expressing it to the world is a real and true thing. Like if you're walking around with your heart door open, then you're able to receive all sorts of stimulus. Not just all the inspirational stuff of like looking at art and listening to music, but like life stuff. Now, the danger of the open door, obviously, is that with those emotions and experiences are often, you know, people. I hate people. That are getting in your heart and like either making the inside of your heart a better place or just really kicking shit over and really making a mess of the joint. All of that input can help you, believe it or not, with your output. It affects what comes out of you. It can guide the themes of your work. Good, bad, ugly, joyful, mundane. It all comes out through the open door. Who left the door open? Comes in, gets processed a little, and then you do whatever you do with it, and then you uh, put it out. Get out of here, I said! And now, the author shall read from her work so as to really drive the point home. The heart door is a swinging door. For the poetry to flow out and into the world, for the art and the truth and the real you of you to drift out to explore freely, the world must also be permitted to flow back in. All of it. For poetry to materialise, reality must be given permission to stomp its boots all through your heart's hallways. This is daunting. All these things, all these inputs can be interpreted and massaged and turned into something great. But only if you're vulnerable. Only if the door is open. That's all I'm saying. I like to think that my heart door's always open. Sometimes it swings a little wide and I have to like get the exterminators in to like get out all the uh, vermin, kick them out the door. Now what could be 
an exterminator, do you think, for me? Could it be, if I have an experience inside my heart that has wandered in, could it be the exterminator I have to remove it is writing? Hmm. Could it be your exterminator is uh, music or dance or it could be anything, really. Something that allows you to express yourself. That's an exterminator. For me, it's writing. And if I'm clearing out my open door heart by writing, then my writing is essentially my interpretation of a hand. Sometimes it's sharp. You can see the edges really clearly. Sometimes it's blurry mysterious. I like to make you think. It's what the brain is for. Use your brain. No two hands are the same. Not yours, not mine. No two pieces of writing that I do are the same. It's the same voice every time. I am me, but everything I write is an interpretation of what has come in through my open heart door and what I am pushing back out into the world. That makes total sense. But I talked about instruments. Hands are instruments. You're an instrument of your work. And as I said in the piece, which I think if there was one line to point out as the line, it's the instruments are passive until they are played. So go play your instrument. That is not a euphemism. It's quite funny how I'm trying to like figure this out as I'm talking. I don't think I've quite got it. What do you think? Let's wrap this up. <laughs> trip report. I saw a lot of cool things in Scotland. Went castling, you know, checking out the rocks and stuff and cemeteries and daffodils, a lot of daffodils. I saw and met the aforementioned Justin Hawkins. Excellent show. I went and saw The Smile in Glasgow. Oh my God, I love Tom York. <clears throat> that was just a happy accident. But I also saw a lot of art, street art in Glasgow. Glasgow! Welcome to to the National Gallery of Scotland in Edinburgh. You have to go. Holy shit. Like that is big picture art, literally and just, you know, in terms of ambition. Good Lord. Those guys, mostly guys. Whew, that's serious art. I spent my whole trip walking around with a heart as open as a 24-hour truck stop. And that's what an art safari is about, which is what this trip was, Art Safari 2024. Go look at art, go experience art. And when my open heart finished processing all of that input. It swung its doors wide open and wrote the post, The Heart and the Hawk, which I shared with the world in a vulnerable moment of bulletproof fragility. Come at me, bro, but, you know, don't. Anyway, go read The, the Heart and the Hawk. When you read that thing, if nothing else, you'll get a sense of how awkward I am around rock stars. It's long. I'd be happy to read it to you. The link's around here somewhere. And until next week, open the door. Not whore door, more door. Wait, that's a different thing entirely. One does not simply walk into more door. Whatever. See you next week. This is not going to be a good one. But it'll be a thing, so let's just move on. <laughs>